Friday, April 6th, and time for your Barbados Today morning news update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Murder accused Aplon Ishmael Paris apologizes for publicly embarrassing his wife when he sent an obscene video of her via an electronic device on March 26th. That's the same day he allegedly murdered police constable Shane Welch. The 26-year-old of Tate's Road, Britain's Hill, St. Michael, pleaded guilty in the Oystens Magistrates Court yesterday to using a smartphone to send the electronic communication that was obscene and intended to cause or is reckless enough to cause distress to his wife, Diana Paris. Asked whether he had anything to say, Paris responded, and I quote, I apologize for my behavior. It was done out of frustration and anger. I should have never embarrassed my wife, end quote. A pre-sentencing report has been ordered by Magistrate Elwood Watts into his life in preparation for sentencing on that charge. Paris, who is also facing murder, assault and burglary charges, returns to the Oystens Magistrates Court on May 3. In other news, the Barbados Drug Service launches an investigation into complaints by patients that they are being asked to pay for certain prescription drugs contrary to a, an arrangement by the BDS. Director Miriam Hines tells Barbados today even though a new drug formulary came into effect on April 1, doctors still had until September to continue prescribing medication which had been removed. But if patients desired a different brand, they would have to pay. Hines says there may be some problems at private pharmacies that her department will seek to address soon. Political scientist Peter Wickham is predicting further defections from the United Progressive Party before the upcoming general election. He made the comments after the UPP's candidate for St. Lucie Linda Fields jumped ship to the Barbados Labour Party. Wickham contends that the party was formed out of hatred for BLP leader Mia Motley. And he says that the UPP will fail to hold on to many of its candidates if it does not change its reason for existing. I mean, it's a reflection that the rubber has started to hit the road in terms of the political action because those, those parties have a good social media presence and I think it communicates or conveys the view that they're stronger than they really are. But once they get into real politicking, which has started, mm. um, it's difficult for them to be sustained because remember these are parties that are designed to attack an individual. So if you set up an institution around your, um, your aversion to Mia Motley, People who support that, that cause will support you, but I mean, I think for a lot of those candidates, they are not committed to this anti-Mia cause in the way that, that the, the founders of the party are. In sports, former government minister and sports organizer Hamilton Lashley says not enough is being done to honor local and regional cricket legends. Lashley believes lasting memorials should be set up to show respect for the worth and work of the Caribbean's biggest names in cricket. That is the problem that they have with, 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 with how we plan, with the, um, how we honor um, our outstanding uh, cricketers, okay? Because we, although we have the legend set up in Barbados, I still feel um, that at the community-based level, a lot more should be done to recognize our outstanding players. Yes, we have Gordon Greenwich, Pavilion, we have Charlie Griffith, Wes Hall, etc. But there's so many other cricketers in Barbados that would have contributed immensely to the development of Barbados cricket, West Indies cricket at the regional, at the national region and international level. That collectively we in the islands have a lot more to do to honor them and pay the necessary tribute. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Nothing more than a list of aspirations. That's how St. Lucia's opposition leader, Philippe J. Pierre, 
has described that the EC $1.4 billion budget presented in Parliament earlier this week by Prime Minister Alan Shastny. He said a major area of concern for all St. Lucians is the uncertain and deteriorating state of the healthcare system. The divestment of our public health assets into private hands is a very serious matter. One that requires broad national consultation, transparency, access to information, and a detailed risk-benefit analysis so as not to disadvantage the public whose greater social good should never be sacrificed for political and economic expediency. During his 2018-2019 budget address, Prime Minister Alan Chastney said that the transition from Victoria Hospital to OKEU will be completed by this financial year. He spoke of plans for a new approach to healthcare financing in what he calls National Universal Healthcare Insurance to be paid for by employers and employees through mandatory contributions. In the recent past, the government has alluded to a public-private partnership management structure. A statutory board is a completely different entity to a private company or public-private partnership. That report from the HTS News Force and on the international scene, a trade war appears to be brewing between the United States and China as President Donald Trump instructs officials to consider an additional $100 billion of tariffs against Beijing. More in this report from the CNN. The Trump administration announced plans, proposals, to impose a 25% tariff on Tuesday for 1,300 Chinese goods to the tune of about $50 billion worth of Chinese exports to the U.S. And now China's Ministry of Commerce uh, has put out a statement that we're getting from Chinese state media saying that it's going to do tit for tat a uh, hundred and six uh, U.S. products that would get a 25 percent tariff and that the categories would include soybeans, uh, automobile products, uh, chemical products and aircraft which are big uh, U.S. Uh, export sectors to China but we haven't gotten either from the U.S. side or the Chinese side yet a date of when these tariffs would go into effect. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website, www.barbidistoday.vb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on ISB Media, in bus terminals and screenplay, at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And don't forget, Mix 96.9 FM for the very latest. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good morning.